This painting is the second most popular painting in Germany after the Mona Lisa. There's a couple of reasons why. It's funny, it's been reproduced countless times in German culture, and perhaps most importantly, it's a reflection of the artist's conditions in 19th century Germany as pictured by an artist. The poet, living in an attic with an umbrella to shelter himself from leaks, is working from a mattress on the floor, which is used as a poor excuse for a bed. It might be extremely significant for Germans, but for me, I have a hard time seeing the appeal. However, this 1839 painting became even more relevant and gained a lot of interest, at least for me, 137 years after its creation. It was used as part of an incredible art performance in 1976. Thank you to all my patrons who support the channel. If you want to help out and you want to be in the credits at the end of each of my videos, it's extremely appreciated and the contribution can be as low as 90 cents per month. Thank you. Perhaps one of the most known performance artists is Marina Abramovic. Very famously, in 2010, she spent a minute of silence with strangers for a total of 736 hours at the MoMA. Even more famously, her ex-husband, Ule, made a surprise appearance, making for an extremely gripping moment. I didn't know much about Ule until I did research on the poor poet. In 1976, a 32-year-old Ule decided to steal the poor poet and documented it in the short movie There's a Criminal Touch to Art. He decided to go for this painting because it was a German identity icon and Hitler's favorite. After a week of devising a plan for the solo theft at the Neuer National Gallery, Ule enacted his plan accompanied by his filming crew, including cinematographer Jörg schmidt radwein who had collaborated with Werner Herzog. He was chased by security guards, but was finally able to escape. The performance didn't stop there. The destination for the Solon artwork was in a Berlin ghetto where many immigrant workers lived. Turkish families were marginalized, were discriminated against, and Ule decided to hang the poor poet in the living room of a German family with Turkish origins. The family thought the cameras were there for a documentary, but they were actually documenting the theft of one of Germany's most prized artworks. As you may imagine, the reactions to this performance were quite negative, not only because it's extremely frowned upon to attack art, especially when it's so nationally revered, but because the themes were controversial for the time, and they still are 50 years later. Ule chose a German identity icon for obvious reasons, he placed this icon in contrast with a Turkish immigrant family. Turkish families aren't part of any German identity icons, of course, and perhaps we should revisit how this fact has consequences on the living conditions of these new Germans and how they're treated. There's also the whole idea of the accessibility of art, who owns it, who produces it, who manages it. The institutionalization of art is a criticism Ule brought up in a later interview. To place the poor poet in a poor home serves as a critique of the bourgeois character of the art world. The poor poet is poor but in name, it's extremely valuable, sits in the National Gallery which, though it is open to the public, is still a temple of bourgeois culture for people who have the time and the education to go to such a place. Ule's performance brought those topics up, topics he was concerned about. Poverty, racial discrimination, national identity, art, and culture. He included these topics in one performance by stealing art, underlining its criminal touch, and exposing it in a working-class home. The image of a highly valuable painting hanging in this home is an incredible one, and even outside of the performance, is a work of art of its own. It's an image that could only exist through violence, it could only be created by force through the criminal touch. Ule created this image for a couple of minutes before giving the painting back to the museum. But these couple of minutes were enough for it to say that marginalized poor immigrant workers are part of Germany, deserve to be Germans, deserve to be part of the culture, deserve to have access to that culture, and own the culture just as much as other native-born Germans do. 
This image, alongside its broader performance, gave a completely new meaning to the poor poet. It gave it a story which, like many other stories, creates and changes culture. By doing this, Ule created an incredible work of art by turning this relic of German identity into an active, dynamic conversation about German identity. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Axel, Roman Brandel, X Talents, Jonathan, and all my other patrons for supporting the channel. If you also want to help out, leave a like, subscribe, and check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. Thank you.